Yo guys, it's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to go over what you should have in your fridge if you're taking training serious and you're taking your health serious. So let's get to it and see what I keep in my fridge that helps me make the progress that I want to make. Lately I've been living like I can't take a loss. They want to help me, that's what made me a boss. You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. We don't give a f that's what they don't understand. I'm back again like flu season, I broke records while loose leaf and I'm coming now on my roof leaving, don't give a f I don't care. Uh, did the f for my lonesome, no wonder now I'm on one, no shortcuts on that long run, all I really want is my share. The first thing that you'll notice is the fridge doesn't have a ton of stuff in it and there's a reason. What I like to keep in my fridge, and this is an opinion only, I don't like to have a lot of variety. I like to make myself eat what I'm supposed to eat all the time. Now, a lot of times because I prep my own food for most of the day, I try to keep everything that I need to prep my food only at the house. If you got a lot of chips or ice cream or lots of different things to cheat on, eventually those things are going to break down and you're going to eat them. Or for some people, you're like, well, I don't want to throw it away. I don't want it to go bad, so I'm going to eat it. Those types of things, in my opinion, create long-term problems. So what I like to do is at the house, I don't have a lot of stuff that I can cheat on. So let's go over a couple big things. One, you'll see that most of what's in the fridge is meat. We have fillets up at the top. We have other fillets here. We have ground beef. This is all laid out and de-thawing from the freezer. Now, what I'll do is I will make about one to two of these per day, and then I will pack and make all of my rice and put it all in these containers. Now, we had another video on cooking utensils, but you want to try to use Pyrex. Pyrex doesn't have any plastics, parabens, or any bad chemicals, and even glass is good. Pyrex is just a little bit stronger in case you drop it. But as you can see, I've already got meat prepped for lunch. The next thing is eggs. There's really not a better and more complete protein than eggs. Now, I don't show that I eat eggs a ton, even though I do fairly regular. One of them is because I just get tired of them. This was the easiest way for me to get protein. When I was in college, you know, $1.50 for 12 of them. Um, and I just ate them so much that I got burned out of them. So I don't talk about eggs a ton but they're one of the best and most complete proteins that you can eat. The next thing that you need to have in your fridge is some sort of Greek yogurt that's unflavored. Now, I don't really like the taste of this, but I force myself to eat anywhere from four to six spoonfuls per day, mostly for probiotics. But if we look at the back, this has 17 grams of protein per serving, which is pretty good with only five grams of carbohydrates. So if you're eating clean, Greek yogurt is a great way in order for you to have some probiotics, some gut health, and some protein all in one rip. The next big thing that I use to cook with and for flavoring is Kerrygold Irish butter. Now this Irish butter has a lot of vitamin K in it, it has a lot of good fats in it, and it is an immense flavor maker for your rice and your meat. So when I'm cooking my fillets right now it, in Ohio, it's winter outside. So I cook my fillets inside on my copper pan. When I do so, I use Kerrygold butter instead of any type of oils. So you want to completely stay away from cooking oils. The next thing is, in cheese I use in moderation, you want to use a hard cheese, like a sharp cheddar. Now the reason that you want to use a hard cheese is that it's less estrogenic, tends to be slightly more healthy for you, and also adds immense flavor, especially when you're eating a lot of beef and rice. So you can add cheese in occasionally. We also use a lot of Parmesan cheese. So if we look at regular Kraft Parmesan cheese, pretty cheap. But if you look at it, it's got 1.5 grams of fat and two grams of protein with zero carbs. So if you need something that's got a little bit of flavor to it, Parmesan cheese is one of the top ones, and I would say probably the best cheese to eat as far as calories are lower, proteins medium, flavors high. All right, the next thing that I like to use on my, if I want to have like a little bit of an Italian kick with Parmesan cheese, is I'll use Rao's homemade marinara. What I like about this is this is a ton of flavor, right? But we have seven grams of fat, we only have six grams of carbs. So it's only 100 calories per serving. So it's a pretty lean, easy, and tasty way to make your beef and rice have that kind of Italian kick. So I'll cook 
my Italian meat, I'll put Italian seasoning in it, curry gold butter in the rice, and then I'll put some Rao's uh, marinara sauce on top of the Parmesan cheese. And it's kind of like you're eating spaghetti without the noodles. It makes it a really good vertical meal for pretty cheap and also very healthy. The next big go-to is salsa. So I'll use Chi Cheese, or I like to get the ones in the glass containers, but Chi Cheese salsa is amazing. Obviously the restaurants went out of business long ago, but the salsa is still around, and this is actually one of my favorite, the thick and chunky medium salsa. You put this on top with a little bit of cheddar cheese on your beef and rice, now you got kind of a Mexican dish. The one big thing I don't see a lot of people talking about is cranberry juice. Now, if you go to Trader Joe's, it's very inexpensive. I think this is $3 a bottle. Um, this is very, very high in iodine and really good for your kidneys. So if you're training really hard or you're trying to get your thyroid to function better, a lot of time it can be an iodine efficient deficiency. So I drink about three to five ounces of cranberry juice per day, usually right when I wake up in the morning, and this helps a ton. But notice, I don't have really any diet pop, even though I will drink it every, occasionally. Um, I don't drink any milk. I think milk is absolutely terrible for most people. Um, and a lot of it's how it's been processed now. It's not necessarily that milk, maybe 7,500 years ago, was terribly bad for you, but because of all the GMOs and all of the things that the cows are eating and the ground quality and all that stuff, I'm just not a huge fan of milk anymore. And you'll even notice the cheese is um, from cows that are uh, cows that are not treated with VST. I mean, this is pretty natural cheese that's usually grass-fed cows. Um, I know that Stan talks a lot about not having to get organic in order for it to be healthy. In my opinion, just for base of saying, I think the organic stuff tastes better. That allows me to eat cleaner, but I also think that I'm a huge fan of herbicides, pesticides not being used and I think it does have some validity in causing long-term health parameters just based on the fact that you don't have all these chemicals on your food or the animals that are eating the grass or whatever. So the next big thing I think is a, another supplement that I think that most people need to be taking in a ton of, and that is omega-3 triglycerides. Now, the reason we're talking about this in the refrigerator is because if you get really good fish oil, it should be in glass and it should be in the refrigerator because it will go bad. Um, Nordic Naturals and ATP Labs, if you want the discount code for ATP Labs, go on to Patreon and we'll give it to you. This, in my opinion, is one of the biggest kept secrets in order to make sure that you're healthy, not only muscle recovery and cardiovascular wise, but eyes, health, uh, skin, hair, everything. And we are all deficient, most of us are all deficient in omega-3 triglycerides. So I take anywhere from 15,000 to 20,000 milligrams of this per day. There's two big things that I eat that are vegetable based that I know everybody talks about. Well, Matt, what do you do for vegetables, right? Baby carrots, I eat anywhere from six to 10 of these a day, uh, maybe more. And then I eat anywhere from two to three handfuls of baby spinach. I like baby carrots due to helping digestion. It's got good vitamins and minerals in it. Uh, and they're just easy to eat and they don't taste bad. Uh, but baby carrots and baby spinach are the two vegetables that we also keep in the fridge fairly regularly. So I hope that gives you a little bit of inclination of what you should be having in your fridge. Notice I don't have anything to cheat with. Um, I'm, I'm all set up for meal prepping and I have, a, I have a reason why everything that is in my refrigerator is in my refrigerator. So open up your refrigerator sometime or maybe today, look at what you've got in there and say, is this matching my goals and is it helping me prepare for not only the day, but next week and next month. Talk to you guys later. Lately I've been living like I can't take a loss. Cause why lose?